Hey there, it's Lori with LM's Crafty Creations and I have another project to share with you. Um, this project is a mini album, of course. It's got a little bit of a different twist to it and I tried something new for you guys. The, and the, the covers measure eight and a half by eight inches. So, I mean, it's not terribly large. The spine is two and a half inches. I gave it a little bit more on the spine than I think I needed to. I think I um, expanded it just a little bit more than what the gussets needed, but it works. Um, so on the front cover, I have taken a cut apart and I've mounted it twice, once on black cardstock and then again on the, the authentic spectrum cardstock. I used the red spectrum in this album. And then um, this is just from the paper collection and then I only glued this on three sides so that I can make a pocket. And inside here, I've just done up some photo mats. These hold three by four photos. And I have done, I punched eyelets, put eyelets right here and um, strung some seam binding in there to make it a little bit more decorative. And these will hold three by four photos, just like that. So cute. I love the seam binding. And these tuck right back in right here and again there's the spine the cute Christmas trees oh this is um did I mention this the paper collection is photo play frosty friends a very cute Christmas collection there's the back and on the inside I stuck these um I had these little well, like chit chat stickers left so I stuck them in the pocket here so I wouldn't lose them and I've just, um, this is just a pocket, the pocket that I always do on my front um, cover, and then I have a different one on the back. And here I've just pieced the paper together because um, towards the end I was running out a little bit. Um, and then on this side, so what I have done here is you'll see that the pages are all different sizes. So I have added my um, binding just like normal, but I have cut into the binding so that the pages are varying sizes. So this first section is about four inches and it just has a, a pocket on the front. These are stickers that I collaged together and then cut out on black cardstock. Some seam binding and then again I did the little photo mats with the cut aparts that I thought was so cute and I loved all this little seam binding. Um, additions to this album and then that's it that's on the front and then this flips and then you have a belly band here and then a pocket here as well but I did not put a photo mat in here so you could do a photo mat in there and then of course this is a pocket and I thought about doing um, photo mats for inside the pages but I didn't do that so there is that this is a sticker from the collection super cute on this side so then the pages get a little bit bigger this one is about five and a quarter, I believe. So I've used a cut apart to decorate the front of it and then just some strips of the design paper. And then this is magnetized right here and it flips open. And then a place for a photo here. This is like a four by five, I believe. And then I did a pocket on the inside with just a cut apart made into a photo mat. And then this closes and then it opens again this way. So a little spread here. Um, I forget which. This is like a five by four and this is a, you know, the this is a landscape and then this is a portrait orientation. Here I have some like, I don't know, two and a quarter by two and a quarter photo mats. And then just a little cut apart. So super cute. I do not have a magnet here, only right here. So this flips over. And here I have a pocket, um, well, sort of a pocket. So this opens up, this is a booklet, just for four by four photos. And then here, this flips once, this is just seam binding that I used, and flips for a four by six here. And then I did some smaller photo mats here. So what I did on the original album is I made the second flap smaller than this one, but in the tutorial I'm cutting it the same because I think I'd rather have it the same. So we have two photo mats here and just some stickers and then again a cut apart and a photo mat there 
and then this is another photo mat. I've added some stickles to it to give it some glitter on the snow and then I have just the the corner pockets that I've used my envelope punch board to make the notches and that just sticks in there. This closes and goes right back in there. Okay and on this side now the pages get to be a little bit bigger. These are six and a half by seven and a half, I believe, are the pages. So I have a pocket here that's holding this flap closed. Again, I did the seam binding with a little cut apart. And then this one opens up this way. I do, ha do not have a magnet here. And then it opens up this way. So you can either do all four by six photos or you could break it up, which is what I did. And then this closes and then the whole thing flips this way. So, and then I just have some stickers that are um, here. And then this keeps this closed. And then turn the page. On this side, I just did a simple stacked pocket. I love this sticker with the penguin. It was so cute. So I put that together. Uh, here, I did, I wanted the, the ribbon sticking out of the top of the book up here. So that's why they're facing the other way. But I did mat them with some paper. And again, just punch the eyelets. And then I did use my envelope punch board to do a notch on these pockets as well. I just like that look. And then here as well. And this one I made a booklet for four by fours and this will hold a three by four. And then here is just a little, um, I'm getting it dirty, photo mat flap with a sticker here and just some decorative paper it turns and this was a sticker from the collection I put an eyelet in it because it was a tag and just added some seam binding and have that one there on this side this is actually a belly band I don't have a photo mat in it but you could put one behind there this is a sticker from the collection I just um, actually two stickers that I put together and then cut them out this opens this way and we have a 4x4 photo here and then you could put a 4x6 here this is a cut apart that I trimmed down to fit here. And then I have a pocket with a photo mat. And of course you could get lots more in there. I just put one. And this closes like this. I did not do any magnets here. It just stays shut on its own. And then this flips over. Whoops. Too soon. And I have a cut apart here that I mounted on um, cardstock. And there are magnets here and here. And you take this off. You could put a photo on the back if you wish. And then these flaps all flip out. I didn't put the white photo mat here because I just didn't think it was necessary. So you would put all of your photos on these. And then I use this kind of like an envelope and put my extra cut of parts in here. And then right here, just because I wanted something a little bit more fun than just one solid sheet, I did, um, I cut, these are one and a half inch squares and just piece them together. So I thought that was cute. I used my scraps for that. So this closes this way. I gotta remember how I do this. So for when I show you how to make the album. And then I have another one of those photo mats here. And I've again, I've collaged two stickers here and cut them out on black cardstock. And then flip it over. And then we have the cute light bulb paper and then on the back cover I did a sideways pocket instead of doing it this way and I just did um, I kind of blocked out the paper and then I used the cute snowman paper here so really fun album it was fun to make it went really fast and um, this stacked whatever whatever you want to call this like graduated page element is not very difficult to do so I'm gonna go right into the tutorial so let's learn how to make this and let's see I think I am ready I'm gonna show you how to cut the hinges and everything during the video so this is for the first page we're gonna start out with the first page and to make the base page this is the short page so the four inch one so for this one you're going to cut a piece at seven and a half by eight and a half inches and you're going to score on the oops I didn't write that down um, I wrote it down on here though 
score on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch and then at four and a half inches and then you're just going to fold on those score lines so I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to fold and then fold and this will give you your base page so we're going to put our glue right here and I had pre-folded mine so that way it was easy whoops I'm getting glue on me and just glue this down I apologize if I sound a little different. It is early in the morning here that at the time I'm filming and I haven't spoken to anyone yet. You're the, you guys are the first, so lucky you. <laughs> so I may still sound a little sleepy. Okay, so there's our base page. Now the, for the front pocket, what I did, um, you're going to cut one piece here to four inches by eight and a half inches and you're going to score on the four inch side at half an inch and on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end and you're going to want to miter your corners okay and fold on all of your score lines Because each page is different in this album, it'll take a little longer to get through it than normal. Lately my videos have been pretty short. So to make the, um, let's see, to make this little pocket here, what I did is I took my envelope punch board and I just guessed where I wanted it to be and I think it might have been at I put the edge with my um, flaps folded in, I put my edge at the half inch mark on my envelope punch board, which is technically one and a half. I might have done it closer because of where it punches. Never mind, ignore that. I would do like a quarter of an inch at the quarter of an inch mark. And then you're going to punch here, and then I flipped it and I'm going to open up the flat but I'm going to make sure that I'm measuring at the quarter inch mark mm -hmm. there we go and I'm going to punch it again so then what I did is let me put that aside took my ruler and my pencil some people do this with the trimmer but I like to do it with a ruler and a pencil and Got, I lined it up right with the edge where that dip is. Does that make sense? That's not going to be close enough. Let me use this side of the ruler. There we go. Okay. And then I just cut it with scissors. You could also cut it with your trimmer. It would probably come out better that way. I'm just going to cut this piece off. There we go. And so that's what gives me that kind of angled pocket on the front page. So we're going to take this pocket and we're going to glue it down to the front of this page. Just lining it up with all three sides. Okay. Now I'm going to flip this over and we're going to do the back pocket, which is super simple. This one's cut at five inches by six and a half inches. Score on the five inch side at half an inch on each end and then on the six and a half inch side at half an inch miter your corners and 
And again here, throughout the book I used the envelope punch board. So on this one, let me, so since the, since the pocket with the hinges folded in is four inches across, I took my envelope punch board. All you do is take the measurement for this and then divide it by two. So which is two of course, um, if it's four inches. And then I lined it up, lined my pocket up. I'm going to punch my notch here with the two on the punch board and gave it a punch. And that's it. That gives me that cute little notch. And that one is going to go right here. And then I did a belly band at one and a half inches by five inches. And then you score on the five inch side at half an inch on each end. And go ahead and fold on those score lines. Make sure they're creased really well. Add your glue. And stick it down. Okay, and then this base page is complete. So let's move on to the second one. Or page one is complete, actually, not just the base page. Okay. And this one for the base page, you're going to cut it to seven and a half inches by 11 inches. And then on the 11 inch side, you're going to score at half an inch and then five and three quarters of an inch. And we're going to do the same thing with this one as we did with the last one. You're going to fold in this hinge right here and add your glue. And then you're going to fold this over. And line it up. Okay, so here's our base page, super simple. Now on this one, let's see, this is for the back page. This one's for the front. So we're going to add the flaps on the front first. So you're going to need two flaps measured at five and a quarter by eight inches. And then you're going to score on the eight inch side at half an inch for each one. And then go ahead and fold on those score lines. And then I'm going to do it this way. So, okay, so this one, you're going to want your hinge facing this way. And I'm going to go ahead and miter this because I'm going to put it on the inside of the pocket. So this one is going to go right here. We're going to glue it down right here like that. And this one is going to go, do I want to tuck it in or not? Yeah, let's tuck it in. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to put them together. you got a hinge on this side and then a hinge on this side. This one is mitered, okay? So you're going to fit them together, stack them up, and I'm going to open up the hinge that's not mitered and add my glue and attach it to this other flap, okay? Is that making sense? So attach these together, 
And now I have my flap that opens this way. A little bit of glue seepage. So now I'm going to take this hinge and I'm going to add my glue and I'm going to put it inside the base page pocket right up to the score line but be careful not to go over it. Oops, I'm slipping and sliding everywhere. Okay, so now I have this flap that opens this way and then a flap that opens this way. So keep this one open and this right here is where I'm going to add my pocket. So my pocket I cut to 8 and 3 eighths by 4 and then you're going to score on the 4 inch side at half an inch and on the 8 and 3 eighths of an inch side at half an inch on each end and then miter the corners. and then fold on all your score lines. And here I did add my envelope punch thingy, so this is going to be 7 and 3 eighths. Let's find the middle of this because I'm not good at that right off the top of my head. So this one is going to be in between like the three and five eighths mark and the three and three quarter mark. So an odd measurement on that one. So I'm going to add my glue. And this one you want to add, let's see, to the left of the page. So line it up with the left of the page where you're going to attach the page to your binding system, okay? So that way you should have about an eighth of an inch gap right here between where the pocket ends and this flap begins. And that will just make everything fold nice and smooth like it is supposed to. This um, Hobby Lobby craft cardstock takes a minute to for the glue to attach for some reason. I don't know why. It's just so I have to kind of really get in there and make sure it sticks. Okay, so this one is done. So flip it over, and on the back of this page, we are going to do two flaps up here and they're going to be the same size. They're four and three quarters by seven and a half and then score on the four and three quarter inch side at half an inch. And we're just going to stack them right on top of each other. So fold on your score line and add glue to the hinge on the outside and then stick it right at the top of the page. I'm just making sure I'm getting it lined up properly. and stick it down. It likes to wiggle on me. So you have that first flap and then you're going to stack that second flap right on top of the one that you just placed. So again, glue on the outside of the hinge and then place it right on the top. Here we go. Okay. Now for this little pocket, so if you remember this page, I had two flaps that flipped up and then I had these little corner pockets here and that's what this is for. So you're going to cut a piece at three and a half by three and a half and then you're going to score on all four sides at half an inch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut this in half. And I don't have my paper trimmer handy, so to cut it in half, usually I would put it in my paper trimmer, line it up diagonally, and cut. 
but I'm just going to draw a line down and cut with my scissors instead this time to get my two corner pockets. So you're going to miter where the score lines meet right here and then when you fold these in you have these little wings that stick out and you're going to cut those off flush with the other end of the pocket, the front of the pocket. Do that on both. I wanted these to be a little bit um, I don't know, more decorative, have more features than just a corner pocket. So I did punch them with my punch board. And so the measurement across is three and a half. So what is that? One and three quarters. Yep, we're going to punch it at one and three quarters. So, I'm going to line it up. And punch. You can also take this and line it up with this middle. Um, it says, mine says bow guide right here. And it'll do it exactly in the middle right there with this corner piece only because this is a corner. Does that make sense? And other um, pockets that won't work just because these are corner pockets. So isn't that cute that those little notches just give it just a little something extra. So now I'm going to take my base page again with my flaps folded up and I'm going to glue these in each corner. So again, when I went to mat these, I think I did it at what? I said that was three and a half, so I matted them at three and a quarter. Um, I cut a square at three and a quarter by three and a quarter and cut it in half, and then again just punched them in the middle, and it, it matted perfectly. So these two will fold down this way and then you'll be able to tuck your little photo mat in here to keep them closed. So that's it for page two. Let's move on to page three. So we're moving right along. Now so we're going to start with the base page. So on this base page I had, did have to do two pieces. So this one and this one. So one piece is at six and a half by seven and a half with no scoring, and the other piece you cut at seven and a half by seven and a half and score on one seven and a half inch side at half an inch on each end. And then fold on those score lines and we're gonna make our base page. Make sure I'm lining up here. Yes. Can't keep my glue on the hinge today. Just got it all over the place. So I'm going to line this up and stick it down. Okay, now we have our base page for the first one. Let's glue down the pocket first. So this one, 
Let me make sure I got the right pocket. Yes, you're going to cut this one at three and a half by seven and a half, and then you're going to score on the three and a half inch side at half an inch, and then on the seven and a half inch side at half an inch on each end. Miter your corners. And I like to make sure and double check and make sure I just measured and cut right. So for this one, I am going to do the notch. And this one you're going to punch it at three and a quarter in the middle if you do the notch. So again, three and a quarter. And this is going to be a side pocket, so you're going to glue it on the side. Right here. Okay, then we're going to add the flaps. So then you take, you cut three flaps at four and three quarters by six and a half, and then you score on the four and three quarter inch side at half an inch. Let me put these aside real quick. You're going to take one flap with the hinge on the left side and fold it. So the flaps in this way. Now you're going to take your other two flaps and you want a hinge on each side. So I have a hinge on the right side here and then on the left side here. So go ahead and fold those hinges in. And let's see, how are we going to do this? Yeah, just like this. Okay, so then you're going to, like we did before, you have two and you're just going to fit them together like so. So you have a hinge on each end like this. So line them up. And they are going to fit directly on top of this flap. With, but make sure your hinge is facing to the left. Make sense? I keep saying that. I guess I must feel like I'm not making much sense today because I, I keep mentioning that. Okay, now we're going to very carefully glue these down and keep them together. You can do them one at a time, but I just find this is easier. And just make sure that they line up. So when this flips, it'll flip that way. So when you do this, what you get is a flap and a flap, and then close, close, and then it'll flip this way. So this we're going to attach to our base page. And did I put it inside or on top? Let's see. I think I put it directly on top. So let's put our glue on the outside of the hinge. My glue is getting a bit gunky. And we're going to glue it right here. So you'll notice there's about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch gap or so between the flaps and the pocket. Okay, and then you'll have your photo mat stuck in this pocket to keep this closed. So let's flip this over and do the back of this. The back of it has the stacked pocket. So let's do these. So these are cut two pieces at three inches by eight and a half, score on the three inch side at half an inch, and then on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end, and then miter your corners for both flaps both flaps. 
Yes, both laps. I had to think about that for a minute. Now on the first pocket, you're going to fold on all your score lines. Let me make sure this looks awfully long. Is this the right size? It is. Okay, good. Now, what does this measure at? Let's see. So, you're going to do your envelope punch board at three and three quarters for this one. And then on the second one, you're going to you're going to do your envelope punch board at the same side, but you're only going to fold in the flaps on the sides and that's it. Leave that last hinge like this. So I'm going to punch my notches at three and three quarters. Okay. So I'm going to glue the first one down on the very bottom. like so and it should line up perfectly with the page oh, my computer is going into sleep mode okay sorry about that I don't know if, if it makes a difference on your end but sometimes the screen freezes on me and I wonder if it translates over into the video. Okay, then you're going to take your other pocket that you folded the flaps in and you're going to put glue only on those flaps. And you're going to stick it right in that first pocket right up to the score line and stick it down. Now the trick though with this pocket since if you choose to do the envelope punch board notches you might have to cut your pattern paper a little um, longer on the top than you normally would because you have this notch to cover. So let me show you on mine. So you want to make sure that you don't see any of the black cardstock underneath here so just cut your pattern paper to go just below that and I don't know if you can see on mine where it ends. I mean it just ends right at this line where this um, curve takes place. So next we're going to add the photo mat flap. So this is done and then we have a flap. You cut this one at six and a quarter by seven and five eighths and then you're going to score on the seven and five eighths side at half an inch and then at five eighths of an inch. So you should have a little eighth of an inch um, gusset right here. So I fold on the first score line and then do the next one. And this paper is a little thick, so it's kind of hard to get that. You want this little gusset right here. So take this page. Um, the reason why you want the gusset is because you have these bulky pockets sticking out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add this flap on the inside of the pocket, like so. But you want to make sure that you don't go over the score line, any of the score lines, for the pocket. I mean, for the flap. Does that make... I almost did it again. Does that make sense? I'm going to stop saying that. Okay. So, I'm going to add my glue and stick this in here. And I'm not going to go over the score line. And it seems for some reason that this pocket is overhanging the edge a little bit for me. Must have just been how my trimmer cut it or something. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe I scored it wrong. But it doesn't matter because I have the eighth of an inch gusset to allow for that room. And there's your flap. 
So, look at there, page three is done. Let's move on to page four. Moving right along, we're almost done. And then we'll talk about the binding. So, let's set all of this aside and talk about the base page. So, the first one you're going to need, did I not score this one at all? Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't. Sorry, let me score this quick. Um, it needs to be this way. Okay, so you have one piece at seven and a half by eight and a half, and then score on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end. And go ahead and fold on those score lines. And this looks large. Is this? I don't know why everything looks so big today to me. But it's the right size, so we're good. Actually, goes that way. Okay, and then take a piece um, and cut it to seven and a half by twelve, and then you're going to score on the twelve inch side at seven and a half. And then this flap is going to fold in like so. So this will be the front of the page. Flip this over, and we're going to glue the back of the base page here. So I've already folded on my flaps, and I'm going to glue it down just like that. I'm just making sure I have everything lined up, but nothing's overhanging. Okay. So there's my base page, and I have my flap this way. So I'm going to add this flap here. And what is that one cut to? Six and three quarters by seven and a half. I didn't score this one either. Like, what was I doing? I guess I got excited and thought I was done with everything and then just didn't score anything. Hold on, let me score these pieces quick too because they're not done either. And this one here and here. Sorry, my phone went off. I gotta check it quick. My daughter is with my parents, so I just want to make sure nothing is needed. Okay. Now, so six and three quarters by seven and a half, and then you're going to score on the six and three quarter inch side at half an inch. Go ahead and fold on that score line, and I'm going to attach this inside the pocket. So I'm going to miter my corners like so. These little pieces drive me nuts. And I'm going to add the glue to the inside of the flap. And stick it inside the base page up to, but do not go over the score line. Okay, and then here, okay, let's do the belly band on the front. Now you can do the belly band or not, it's up to you. This one's cut to two inches by eight and a half inches, and then score on the eight and a half inch side at half an inch on each end. And give him a crease. And I stuck it, let's see what I do. I eyeballed it because that's what I always do, but I put it about in the middle of the flap. And then we will talk about the angled pocket on the inside of this page. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way. 
The angled pocket's easy too. It just requires a little bit more effort. Okay, so there's our first flap and our second flap, and our angled pocket's going to go here. So let me open up my book. So put this aside, and let's take this piece. The angled pocket is cut to five and a half by seven and a half. Score on the five and a half inch side at half an inch, and then on the seven and a half inch side at half an inch. And I don't remember what I cut mine to, so I'm going to bring this over here and measure. So what I did, let's go ahead and miter the corner on this one and then fold on your score lines because you're going to measure from the fold. So why does my phone keep going off? Why does Amazon text you like 15 times before your package is delivered? That's what that noise is. It's Amazon. Okay. So now, this at the top, I measured over a half, one and a half inches. So what you're going to do with your folds like this, you're going to measure over one and a half inches and make you a little tick mark here. And then on the bottom, you're going to measure up from the bottom to two and a half inches, like so and make a little tick mark there. Whoops, that's two inches, two and a half. And then you're going to join those two together using your ruler. You're going to draw a line joining them together. Whoops, but it just got a little wonky. Probably because I'm doing it on top of this book and I shouldn't be doing that. Okay, so now there is my, and I'm going to um, angle pocket, I'm just going to cut that off. So, I don't, I'm going to need this again in a minute for the back page. Okay, you can use your trimmer or your scissors for this. I tend to use my scissors because I just think it's faster, but it's probably not. So then I'm going to take my base page again and open it up. And you're going to put your angled pocket here. I'm going to kind of erase some of these lines because when you mat you don't want them to show. So this one I try to stay about an eighth of an inch away from the score line, your crease for the flap. That way everything closes properly. If you don't do that then you have your flaps stay open and it's, it's really annoying. So to figure this out I just kind of place it here and then I fold my flap and everything is nice and flat. So that's how I know that this right here, about an eighth of an inch away, is good. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't have time to mute my camera. I don't have um, any water in here today, so. My bad. Okay. I'm going to stick it here, line it up. I apologize if my camera shakes a little bit. It does sit on my table, unfortunately. I don't have a way to mount it just yet because the fan's in the way. So. It has to be on my table, which is annoying when it shakes my videos. Okay, so there's the pocket and the flaps, and that's it for that. So turn this page over, and let's do the back. The back is the one that has all the crazy flaps, so you're going to cut four of those flaps to four and a quarter by four and three quarters. I can't pick them up. And then you're going to score on the four and three quarter inch side at half an inch. And then um, fold on all of your score lines. Now this page isn't hard. I just had to remember how I um, attach them all so they fold correctly. So you're going to take your first one and put glue on the outside of the hinge. And then you're going to stick this one, I know, 
goes to the top, like so. And you're going to line it up with the corner of the page. So this way, it flips up this way, okay? The next one is going to flip out. So I do believe, let me see, what did I do? This one went down there, and this one went on the side. Okay, yeah. Oh no, I did that one on top. And that one. Okay, good to know. I'm glad I looked at that. Now I can tell you correctly. So, take the next one, and you're going to line it up right here so that it folds out this way. And you're going to stick it directly on top, not inside the pocket. So add your glue to the outside of the flap and line it up. Make sure it lines up with the top flap. You don't have any overhang anywhere. Okay. Looking good. Is that seriously Amazon again? So, let's see. Arriving today. Your package is arriving today. Arriving today. A different package is arriving today. Shipped. Like, okay, I'm going to get another one here in a minute saying the other package is shipped. Gee. Okay, now this one is attached at the bottom here, so it will flip down. So, again... right here and the final one so I think yeah the final one I did actually put on the inside of here like that to go over this one so you're going to put it, if you have all of these open, you're going to put it on the inside of the pocket here. So this time you're going to put your glue on the inside of the flap. And then add it right there at the bottom. Up to, but not over the score line. And then they should all fold together nicely. Fold, always do the top one, side, bottom, bottom. Okay, and then you'll put a magnet here, and then you'll put a magnet here on your, um, whatchamacallit, photo mat, and you'll stick it down, and then it will hold all of these closed. And then I added one last feature, and that's this photo mat flap, that again, I cut it to the same size, six and a quarter by seven and five eighths, score on the seven and five eighths inch five eighth inch side at half an inch and five eighths of an inch. I cannot say that today. And I'm going to fold on both score lines. Get this little crazy score line. And then again, I'm going to be sticking this one on the inside of the flap like so. So put your glue on the inside. I'm sorry, I'm sticking on the inside of the pocket. That's what I should have said. And I'm just going to center it as best as I can from top to bottom. Okay. So that is it for that. And this will fold this way and look all cute. Okay, so that's it for our pages. So we're already at an hour long video, so let's move it right along. Let's talk about the binding system. Okay, let me show you what I do. So I've already created the binding. So when I talk about the binding, 
this piece I cut to seven and a half by 12. And then I give you the scoring measurements in the description down below. And I created one inch hinges for my binding. Okay, so you see the one inch hinges instead of half inch. And then I have half an inch gussets here. Now, when I do my binding, you'll see that this flap is shorter than this flap. I don't like that. I like at least one and a half inches on the side. This is only an inch. So in order to get my one and a half, I cut a piece at one and a half by seven and a half, which is the length of the binding system, and I glue it right here on top to get my one and a half inches. So I'm gonna do that now. So I wanted to tell you that because that's the reason for the odd measurement in my um, binding. So I'm just gonna go crazy with my glue here and I'm gonna add it right here. And I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna fold this hinge so that way I make sure not to go over the score line. And just stick that down really well. So now I don't, it just makes me feel better that I have an extra half inch when I attach this to my book, okay? I like to have it even on both sides. So there's that. That's what it looks like. Now that I've explained that, let's talk about how to cut the hinges. So what you're going to do is measure. And I give you all these measurements in the description down below. Um, you're going to cut your hinge. I don't need my glue, so let's plug her up. Um, on the first hinge right here, you can see how I have one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to lay them kind of flat like this. I hope you can see this. And then what I did is I took, this is the first hinge right here. I took the my ruler and just paying attention to the first hinge, measured from four inches up, and then I drew a pencil mark here, okay? And then on the next hinge, I'm gonna bring it down, and then I measured at five and a quarter. I'm not making a mark on the, um, whatchamacallit. Should I, let me see. Did I cut? Um, no, I just cut the hinge. Yes, yeah, so this is correct. So now at five and a quarter, I make my mark, and I'm not marking on the gusset at all, just the, the one inch hinge. And then I'm gonna bring this one down, and this one I'm going to measure. My ruler's at six and a half down here, and I'm going to make a mark here. And then this one you don't have to do anything with because that's our largest page, okay? Um, so now you're going to cut this. And it, it's kind of nerve-wracking to cut it for the first time, but it'll be okay. So what I did is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut it straight like so. This one is at the four inch mark. And I'm gonna cut it right up to the score line for the gusset, like this. And then you gotta take this off, so this has to come, follow the score line for your hinge and take it all the way down. So you're, you end up with this. This is the hinge that I just cut off and this is what's left. So our four inch page, which is right here, will attach to this hinge once I miter it. So I'm gonna miter it a bit. Now you can draw a half inch line here to make sure you're getting this correct. I'm just eyeballing. So what I mean by that is you could draw, take your ruler and measure a half an inch like so. So you don't want your page to go over this half inch line, okay? So you're gonna put it on just like that. So there's your first page. So it's, it's not too terribly hard. So n then we're gonna do the next one. You're gonna do, 
you're going to lay it flat and on this time you're going to cut into this gusset here but you just lay it flat and it'll automatically cut into it once you do this. So you're going to cut it all the way up to the score line, turn it, and then cut down the score line for the gusset, like so. And then there is our next page. And then the same thing for this one. Hold it like so. You see my pencil mark? Cut. Like that. And then down. So there is our little graduated page. And then each page will fit on here, but you're going to have to miter it like so. So what I recommend doing is on your hinge, draw a half an inch mark to divide your hinges and then miter your corners. So I'll do one more for you so you can see it. So this next one, um, I'm going to do half an inch here and I'm just going to miter it using that score line. So it'll look like that. Okay, so there's your binding. Now, when you attach this to your book, let me bring it over here. What I did first, after I created my cover, I then took a piece of cardstock and I covered this back piece. I thought about doing decorative paper because there's so much black right here, but I just thought that would be too much color. I thought it would clash because then you have these black hinges that would look, you would see the stair step and I think it looks cleaner this way. That's up to you. Um, so create your album cover and then cover this piece with a piece of black cardstock and then place your binding over the top of that cardstock to make this look clean. Otherwise, if you don't put this black cardstock or whatever color you're using for your album down, then you're going to see all of this right here and it's going to look gross. So um, and it's probably not going to function right. So make sure you put this black cardstock piece down. Now I don't know what I did mine to. I didn't cover the whole, let me see. I did that before I put my binding system down. So let me see. I would say that I did it probably at I cut a piece at six inches by the binding measurement, seven and a half. So six inches by seven and a half, and I stuck it down here, and then binding system on top. Okay. And then I just added my pages. So super simple. So I hope you like it. It is something a little different. And that's all I got for you guys, I think. I have. The photo mats, I did the, the measurements because I, you know, I cut them a little taller to place my eyelets, and I used the really tiny eyelets, which I thought were cute. Um, so I give you the measurements for that in the description box down below as well. And I can't think of anything else to tell you guys, but as soon as I turn the camera off, I usually think, dang, I wish I would have said this. So that's why I kind of hang out here for a second trying to think of things. But I think that's all that I have for you. So I hope you like the album. I think it turned out super cute. It's a super fun Christmas kind of album. And I had a lot of fun making it. And it does not take much time to make this at all. I made it in a weekend. So thanks for watching and have a great day. I'll see you next time.